Hi everyone, I'm back again, <laughs> this time adapting something that a lady on YouTube created called the Round Chest Draw using the Songbird Collection. I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce her name. I will put the link down below this video. Um, brilliant idea using CDs, old CDs that we don't have, some cardstock, pattern paper and some glue um, and a bit of chipboard but I've put a bit of a spin on it and I've sort of, because I've been, um, this lady said she was going to have a PDF of the template that was needed for the drawers but I couldn't wait because I'm impatient. Um, she's actually on holidays at the moment so but she will put it up on her blog and I'll, again, put the link down below so that um, you can go and do that. But I have adapted it so that you can make your own template. Well, it's not really a template. I create it each time I make the drawers. Okay, and you need the, the drawers, the template for the drawers. Well, you don't need the template for the drawers. But anyway, we'll, we'll keep going. Enough rambling. Okay, have it so that your 8 inch side is sitting at the top of your scoreboard. I need to score that at 1 and 7 eighths, 3 and 7 eighths and 7 inches. Rotate it once to the clockwise to the right and we need to score that at 2 inches. Okay, so now if we look at it, we've got the 1 and 7 8 inch width here, but we've got the 2 inch by 2 inch. Okay, so that's 1 and 7 8 inches wide by 2 inches deep. This is 2 inches by 2 inches. Now this is the piece we're going to work on at the moment. So what we're going to do is we're going to create our arc. So get your ruler. I'm just going to mark that with the pencil so I can just easily find that. So what we're going to do is create our arc. So put your ruler, position your ruler so that the two inches on the corner there, okay, and then at the end of it just mark a little line. I'll have to put this up a bit closer because this camera is all out of whack. So what we're doing again is placing our whoops, get it right, Jen, the ruler, the two inch mark on our corner. See I've done two dots there and or two markings. So then just okay, continuing that line along, making sure that your ruler, your two inch mark, is sitting on that corner there. Now I want to make a few more marks in here so I can connect them up easier, get that arc really good. Well, try. Okay, so just moving the top of the ruler around but leaving that two inch mark on that corner. Okay, there like that. Okay, so now can see that, that all those dotted lines there. Let's connect the dots. You know how to do that. We all know how to do that. Okay, and then that's what we've got. We've got our arc, our curved line. So before I cut that out, what I want to do is just burnish all these scored lines. Okay. Now what we also want to do is we want to make some shark teeth in this um, three, and, uh, 3 and 7 8 inch section. So all I'm going to do is just draw some triangles along that line. Okay, so now just get your scissors and let's cut out this arc
down to that middle score line there. Now cut our sharp teeth out or our triangles. Now making sure that you go down to that scored line. Now this is just going to help fold it around the curved edge. Doesn't matter. You can put multiple triangles in there. You can put as long as you have a few so that it's going to curve pretty good. So I've got five here. But you can have ten, you can have however many you wanted. So now I'm going to cut that end off. So that's what we're left with. I'm going to have to move this camera out a little bit, I think. Okay. So that's what we've got. Now, we also need to cut this line here, this first scored line that we did here, just from the intersection, intersecting line now. So I'm just going to use my craft knife and ruler and just cut that down. Okay, so that's what we've got there. That's going to sit there like that and that's going to curve around there and sit in there and make our draw. Okay. Right. So, next thing, what we want to do, so sitting like that, apply either wet glue or score tape on this first cut area here. Oh, here. So I'm just going to put some score tape on here. Now you wonder why I use a ruler to cut my score tape. Well, that's how I can get it right to the edge. Sometimes when I rip it as it's intended to be ripped, um, I don't, I sort of bring it away from the edge. So not all corners or edges are actually covered with the tape. And I think it's so important to have all the edges covered with your tape or adhesive whatever you're using all right let's just actually what I might do first is then go ahead and on the end little rectangle piece here we also need to apply either wet glue or double-sided tape so I'm just going to go and on the same side that we put the tape here we're going to put it on the top here done. Now, remove your tape backing from this larger area here. And, yep, there it is, okay. Now, we're just going to swing that around, okay, so that this, okay, so this square next to it is going to sit on top of it, that um, tape. So I'm just going to line it up and stick it down. Alright, so that's done. So that's what we've got now. So then this is going to, this side here that we've got the tape on is going to come in. Those shark teeth are going to sit inside on top of that curved arc there and this is going to slit its slot in there and attach to to join it all together okay like that so what I'm going to do now before I do anything else is okay so we want the adhesive to go on the underside of those shark teeth so that it adheres to that ed curved edge there so we need to put adhesive, and I'm going to use wet glue for this so that I can manipulate it to get that curve edge fairly straight. 
if you know what I mean. Okay, so, oops, should have removed the tape backing from here first for the glue dries. All right, bring those shark teeth in, up and over. Now, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to line up this edge here. Okay, so that's joined and it'll give me time to work on this curved edge here. So I think I could have even cut some more shark's teeth to that to give it a more curved look but it'll do it's good enough okay stick it down okay and now we have our little drawer insert but and here's my take on it it's not sturdy enough so I want some chipboard for the strength Okay, so we need to cut some chipboard and if I could find it I'd cut it. I thought I'd cut some pieces out and probably use them already. Okay, let me get some scraps. Oh, here's a bit here. Alright, so what I need is a strip that is three eighths of an inch, three eight, three and one eighth, sorry, by one and seven eighths. Three and one eighth, yeah, okay. Uh, three and one eighth. And again, I'm just going to use my trimmer and mark that down there, three and one eighth. And actually, I might cut that off first so all right now I want to cut that down to one and seven eighths inches and I might as well do a few of them while I'm at it all right so we also need a piece that is two inches square, a piece of chipboard, okay so I think we need it two inches, yep two inches first, let's cut that down. by two inches. Now we need to get the arc again. Now what you could do, I guess, is cheat and just put that on there and trace it and cut it out. Go ahead, do that, but I always find that if I do that it's going to be out. That Just that little bit. All right, so again, going from the corner at the two inch mark, moving the top of the ruler over and keeping the ruler on the two inch corner area there. And we're just marking our dots to connect to make the arc. So let's join the dots. And we can cut that out with our um, Timmy scissors. That'll do it. Okay, there's our arc. And if you're not happy with it, sand it. Okay, done. Right. Now, this three and 
one eighth by one and seven eight inch piece of chipboard. Get your trimmer out again. And what we're going to do is we're going to mark about quarter inch increments. And it's only like it's only a guesstimate. You don't have to be exact. And we're just going to pass the blade. Oh, silly girl. Pass the blade through the chipboard once. Doing that allows you to get the curve that you need. Okay, so we're just going to bend those scored lines out like that. Okay, just like that. So then we can get our curve. Alright, so that needs to sit on there like that. Now, how are we going to do that? Well, you can use hot glue or you can use hinges. And I choose to use hinges. Now, I'm going to have this sitting on top of that, the base of that arc there, that curved piece. And that's why I had it to one and seven eighths inches rather than the two inches. So you've got the height of your chipboard plus, yeah, okay. So we need a hinge strip and we need to cut it to three and an eighth okay by one inch scored in half at half an inch burnish put double sided tape score tape on it burnish it done now we're going to cut out shark's teeth okay so I'm just going to mitre that first, both ends. Right, so what we need to do is cut our triangles again, but don't, like, just cut out little triangle sections. But don't um, go right to that scored line, because you're going to cut it in half. Because we've got to um, do the same to the opposite side in a second. So just, you know, about a sixteenth of an inch away from that score line. Do your little cut your little triangles out. Okay, there's one side done. Now do the same to the opposite side. And that's what your cardstock hinge should look like. Well, close enough. All right, so I'm just going to remove the tape backing from one side. And this is the pain, this one, getting all these little bits off. Now, depending on how many level layers, levels you're going to make your set of drawers, you're going to have to do this a few times. So one level you got four of these hinge shark tooth hinges so if you do two levels you're going to need to do eight of them three levels 12. <coughs> have fun now instead of the double-sided tape i guess you could just not have your tape on there when you cut your triangles out and then just apply your wet glue I don't see that there's a problem with that. Wet glue is probably my preferred adhesive anyway. Because it actually dries. Whereas the, the um, tape doesn't. Alright. Where'd our pieces go? Alright. So what we need to do. I'm going to attach it to the base first. And so what I'm going to do is just start and put that score line sitting 
on the curved edge like that and follow that all the way around. So we're just rolling it around there like that. Okay, so then we can press down underneath all those little, hey, didn't want you press down, all those little teeth. All right, so that's what we've got now. And then we get our curved chipboard piece. I'm going to start at one edge and I'm, I've got it sitting on top of that base piece. Okay, so it's going to sit right on the edge. So I want to just secure one side first, go around to the other side, because we're manipulating the radius of that curve, well, you know, the angle of that curve, whatever you want to put it. It's, how do you, well, I'm no mathematician, no, geometry wasn't my forte. Okay, so there. Now what we can do... Now, before I adhered that down, I wanted to put some wet glue, but that's okay. Okay, so then, just want to make sure that it sits on the edge, doesn't overhang. And then, attach those teeth to it. just like that. Now if I had to put wet glue on there it wouldn't be giving me grief. So that's okay. It can stick out a little bit and I'll show you why in a minute. Alright. Done. Alright. So that's what we've got now. Okay. That keeps wanting to pop out. Okay, so then we take our drawer that we made, our cardstock drawer, and it's going to get attached to that chipboard piece like that. Um, yeah, there like that. Okay, so what we need to do, and I probably should have done that beforehand, but hey, this is me. Okay, so I, I, what I would do is I'd put a draw pull. Um, actually, you know what, I could probably use the Tim Holtz Hitch Fasteners on this one. It's probably better, you know. Hmm, I've actually got one here, I might try it. Got a base on there. Yeah, what's going on? It's so tight. There we go. Alright, so I need to punch a hole in here so I can slot this through. Because before we attach our chipboard to our cardstock drawers. I want to put the draw handle on. So I need to, I'm just going to roughly gauge the center of it and then come down about just above the center mark and punch a hole. And then we can insert that and then screw on our hitch fastener and that is a perfect pull for this size drawer and then what you need to do is just put some glue adhere the chipboard to the cardstock with I would use wet glue myself and then that will sit where to go in the sections there so just like that. Okay. And then you've got your next layer sitting on there. And so we just pull out the drawer once it's attached. Easy. Okay. So, but I would actually, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and sh do a shabby chic style rather than my vintage grungy style. So what I would do is I would paint, <laughs> it's annoying me, I would paint the edges or paint the chipboard 
at least um, the top and the sides and maybe the bottom and then cover it with pattern paper and I think I just I'm just going to cover the front with the pattern paper it's going to be a um, storage unit it's not going it's not going to be a showcase thing so there we go done I'll come back and show you what I um, when I've finished my putting it all together all right have fun with it all guys I will try and put some dimensions up on my blog I'll actually <laughs> should I should I put a template up there or should I make you do your own arcs because it's easy and I think if you do your own arcs and cut each piece out rather than tracing a template you're gonna get the exact measurements every time rather than using a template so let me know what you want okay have fun making your little set of drawers see I put a um a what do you call them lazy susan thing so it turns spins underneath wonder what it would be good for because they're not real big drawers what's on my desk that I need yeah, it'd probably be good for um, charms but I've got my charm boxes it could be good for beads it could be good for I don't know. You tell me. All right. I'm procrastinating. Got to get on making more. Thanks, everyone. Bye.